Storage 1.3 recap. Okay, so secondary storage, or sometimes it's called auxiliary storage, is where devices are consistently connected to a computer. Devices are not directly accessible by the computer's CPU. And if you think of the layout of a motherboard, the, um, the hard drive or the solid state disk, whatever you're using as your secondary storage, isn't directly built onto the motherboard, it doesn't bolt on. So like RAM does bolt on, it fits in a little slot, whereas you have to connect a hard drive with cables. So it's not directly accessible with, uh, by the CPU. When you plug a USB pen in, um, it uses a universal serial bus to take that little flash drive, the data from that, onto the CPU. So it has to be taken there some way. Why do we need it? Well, we use it as backup um, to store data from the main primary memory. Stores programs or data or other files that would otherwise be lost when we turn it off. So if you're doing something, you've made like a picture on paint, and you want to save that forever, if you turn that computer off, it's going to be lost. It'll be active in RAM, but it'll be lost. So if you want to keep it, that's where secondary storage comes in. We know that RAM is volatile and we can't store it forever, so we need some sort of way of storing it uh, forever for a long term. That's where secondary storage comes in. So the advantages are that they are non-volatile, that we can keep them for a long time. Now, there's different ways we can store it. There's three different technologies we'll look at in a second. But that's the main thing about it. The characteristic is they are non-volatile. Data is not lost when the computer is switched off. It stores large amount of data. Okay, so if you turn the hard drive power off, it's, it's not game over, it's fine. So we've got internal, hard disk drives and solid uh, state drives. And then we've got external, so CDs, memory cards, DVDs, Blu-ray discs, flash drives, those sorts of things. And then if you were struggling, if you can remember that an internal is hard disk drives and solid state drives, then you can have external hard disk drive and an external solid state drive if you're really struggling in the exam. But think of those as things that you have to put into the computer. So the three types of technologies, now this, sometimes they might try and throw you out in the exam with this one, but it is a technology. So if you said a Blu-ray, that isn't a technology. It's an example of a product within a technology. So optical, remember optical starts with an O, an O looks like a CD. They're inexpensive, reliable, robust, large capacity, but they use a laser. So the idea is that uh, on the CD you've got pits and troughs or shiny and dull parts. The laser from the, uh, let's say, the PlayStation 3 is being shone down onto the disc where it sees a shiny part it might read that as a zero or one, and then where it sees a dull part, it sees that as a, the corresponding value, either a zero or one, depending on what they are. Magnetic stores, usually, usually use magnetic for backup, but the idea is, again, that a magnetic charge is written, and then is it north or south charge on the device. And solid states. They are... They are the most expensive, but they're the quickest to access. They've got no moving parts that makes them more reliable. Okay, so you'd always favour a solid state. If money's no issue, solid state's the best. It's faster, it's more reliable. However, when money starts coming in, you need to think about, well, do you need to be able to access it so fast? So these are the characteristics. Capacity. How much data can it store? How much can you get on there? How much of a film can you store on there? The speed. Speed alone isn't enough. You need to say it's how fast can you access the data. So it isn't about how fast you can get it, it's how fast you can access the data. How long does it take to load that? I don't know, music video or whatever it is. Portability, how easy is it to move from one place to another? Durability, how well does it last if it's dropped? So if you get a hard drive and you throw it, is it still going to work? Solid states probably have got a better chance of working than a magnetic because they've got no moving parts that can snap. Reliability, or reliability, how consistently does it perform? If you turn it on today, is it going to turn on tomorrow? Is it going to turn on in five weeks' time? If it's, you're making a backup of something, you want to know that if I come back to it in two years, is it still going to work? And the cost. That's defined by how much does it cost per kilobyte, megabyte, or gigabyte.